Joining us now, the head basketball coach at North Texas and a friend of mine for a long time, Tony Bedford. Tony, good to see you again, Coach. Good to see you, Ron. You and I have known each other a long time, and especially the time at North Texas. What stands out to me when I look at your team, you've never had this kind of depth or talent coming back. Is that fair? No, there's no doubt, Ron. This is the, we, when we first took the job, we inherited a team that was had some talent, but it was young talent, you know, inexperienced talent, and uh, had a lot of injuries that year. But this team here, you know, we when you return, you know, four starters and arguably uh, one of the best players in the league, mm-hmm. Jeremy Combs, uh, you have a chance uh, to, to have a successful season. Uh, also, when you have G. Michael Reese, who started at point guard, who transferred from A&M, set out a year and a half, but now he's starting. To, he's he has his groove back. He's doing a great job of uh, setting the tone uh, in the weight room uh, and, and fall, in, in our uh, individual workouts. He's done a great job. And since we started practice, he's been a tremendous leader for us. And also bringing back Dickie Johnson, right. one of the best three-point shooters in our league. So we're v- fairly deep. We've added some really good transfers. Uh, uh, D- Darrell Green from Incarnate Word started there, started at Wichita State, and uh, he's a stretch four. That uh, he'd be the best stretch four we've had since uh, since I've been in North Texas. And then uh, Keith Fraser, you know, everybody knows Keith from Story. SMU. SMU can really s- score the basketball, but both of those kids are are winners, you know. So we're very fortunate to have those guys in our program, and they're bringing a lot to our program. I, I look at your team now, and I see athletic ability, I see size, I see that athleticism, I see more toughness. You're looking for matchup problems this year, and I think you're going to present that to other teams. Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you, when you look at our roster, you just mentioned we, we play a lot of different ways. We play small ball, we can play big, and, and one of the kids that's really improved in our program, probably our most improved player, is Ricky Bryce, uh, the seven one kid. And Ricky's uh, is in tremendous shape. He came in about last year, 285, 290, now he's about 260. And uh, he's running the floor. He's he's uh, doing a great job of rebounding the basketball. He's a guy that can score. But uh, we are deep, and, and our comp- our practice has been very, very, very competitive at, at every spot. And uh, so that that's going to give us a chance to to have some success. But the thing we have to do is this: we have to defend. I mean, that's the bottom line. We yeah. understand that we can score points, but we have to defend. And uh, and, and our guys uh, are really taking a lot of pride on the defensive end now, and in, 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 in practice, and, and that's that's, that's got to be the, the culture that we said that we're going to be a solid defensive team. Well, Bryce had 36 blocks. Combs had 23 last year for the Mean Green. I want to get back to J. Michael Reese, watching him play at at Texas A&M, and then watching him play last year. Did you get the sense he tried to do too much at times last season? Yeah, I don't think there was uh, any doubt, uh, Ron. He, uh, you know, again, he sat out a year and a half, and mm-hmm. that's tough. You know, you can be in practice, but when you get in a game situation, it's a lot different. And I thought he, uh, you know, put a lot of pressure on himself, and, and, and you know, with the expectation with him joining our team last year, I thought he, you know, tried to do too much. And, and uh, finally, I, you know, brought him in and and talked talk to him about relaxing, just getting get his teammates involved. Mm-hmm. And he's a he's a more of a, a scoring type point guard, and so. Uh, I think you'll see the maturity that uh, that he's gained from last year, and I think he's going to have a solid season for us. And he's he's done a great job, uh, you know, like I say, uh, in practice so far, and, and being a good leader, setting the tone for us on the offensive end and the defensive end. You talk about Jeremy Combs; he averaged a double double last year, almost 15 points a game, 10 and a half rebounds a contest. I remember seeing him, <clears throat> excuse me, against Creighton his freshman year, and I thought, this skinny little kid, <laughs> he's got a chance to be pretty good. Yeah. Where is this game going now? What does he need to do to go to the next level? Well, I, I tell you what, he's uh, he's got a tremendous motor. I mean, again, he's, he he plays hard. He's doesn't take any plays off. He can score in tight spaces. Uh, chases every ball. He's just got a nose for the basketball. But he's increased his range, Ron. He, he's a guy that can step out to 15 feet now. He can put it on the floor, you know, from the high post and make a play. He's obviously great in transition. I mean, he's a Probably the fastest forward I've ever coached uh, since I've been coaching 25 years. He changes in as quick as anybody, and so and that's the thing I think you'll see. He's been uh, I challenge him too to be more of a leader, more vocal, and he's done that, you know. And so we're we're really very fortunate to have Jeremy in our program. And what stands out too is he gets to the line. He averaged about six free throw attempts a game, and you like I think your star to be able to take it to the hole and draw the free, free well, throws. Well, it's, it's no doubt. You know, we want to get, we talk about paint touches. We're really big on getting the uh, paint touches, and, uh, and and that's one of the things that the advantage you have when you get the ball inside uh, by pass or dribble, you're gonna, you know, you're aggressive, you're going to go to the foul line. And Jeremy, uh, he's led us in free throw shooting since he's, he's been on campus, and uh, he's improved his free throw shooting mm-hmm. on campus. Last year, he, he, I think he got up to almost 70% in, in conference play, mm-hmm. so uh, he's going to get fouled a lot because he's so aggressive, and uh, we need him to continue to, continue to stay aggressive 
to play that way. You mentioned Decky Johnson. This is a young man that about 62% uh, of his field goal attempts were threes. Does he have the green light every time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's why I wanted to know. Thanks, Coach. Thanks no, for being here. He, he, he can make shots. Uh, the thing we challenge Dickie, you know, he's got to take better shots. That's one of the things. I think with some of the pieces that we've added, when you have a, a key phrase on the wing, you have Decky on the wing, people's going to have to they're going to have to choose who you know uh, how they're going to guard those guys. And with adding a guy like Darrell Green, that's going to create more space for us mm -hmm. on the floor because his ability to stretch as a stretch for to shoot the basketball. So that's going to open up driving lanes up for us. So I think Decky will benefit from that and get a lot better shots. And you'll see his percentage go up a lot better this year and I think he you know he'll get a lot of better looks and, and he'll, he'll knock them down. You don't have a lot of newcomers but one that really stands out and anybody that knows anything about the Dallas Fort Worth area knows about Keith Frazier came from SMU. What is he going to bring to the table not only on the basketball court, but the fact that he has a reputation in that area of what kind of player he was. Well, it's no doubt. First of all, Keith is, uh, I've known Keith since he was in eighth grade. You know, I've known him a long time, and his mom, and, and, and uh, we were very fortunate to have him. He's, first of all, he's been a well coach in high school. He's coached by, you know, Royce Johnson, won a couple state championships, and, and then uh, obviously playing for one of the greatest coaches ever, and Coach Brown. So he has a great IQ of, 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 the, of, of, of the game. He studies the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he, like uh, right now, he's out with a little slight knee injury, but he's going to be fine. But he'll come up to me during practice, hey, coach, uh, you know, can, we got to tell J. Michael he needs to get a little bit uh, deeper on his penetration as far as, you know, in transition, you know, cheating the elbow and getting the ball in. So different things like that. You know, he knows the game, understands the game, and he's going to, you know, he's going to be a quality uh, quality player for us. He, you know, everybody knows him here, and he's he's got the ability to, uh, score the basketball. I mean, he's a complete right. player. Uh, he can also score, but he can also is a really good defender. And and I think having guys, that's the one thing. You look at our roster. You know, we have 16 guys on our roster. 12 out of 16 are from the metric from this, uh, from the state. We have nine from this area. And and having a guy like Keith, a Mac, former McDonald All-American, guy like Jeremy Combs, who was uh, the player of the year in Dallas at DISD. We're very fortunate to have those type of players in our program. But that's what we want to have. Uh, you know, uh, Dallas kids in our program. I want to talk to all the coaches about let's up the RPI for Conference USA. And doing that, you have to win your games in December. How important is it? Because you've had some signature wins yeah. in December. Creighton a few years ago, Texas A&M, for instance. How important is it to win those games? Well, bottom line is we got to win games. That's on us yeah. as coaches and team and, and our players. we got to win, win games because uh, the bottom line is from, from top to bottom. You know, uh, you, our, our, again, our, our league, is, I believe, is underrated, but we got to prove it. we got to go out mm -hmm. and win games. We, you know, we, we have a very challenging non-conference schedule. we got to have some uh, uh, we, ha we got to have some wins. That's the bottom line. And if we we do that, uh, and other programs do that, uh, I don't. I think we can get two, two, maybe three teams in in the uh, NCAA tournament. But that's where it starts. In our conference play, you, you got to win games. And we got a challenging schedule. And a lot of teams in our league have challenging schedule schedules. And if we have success uh, with those schedules, I think you'll see that translate into maybe getting you know two bids. All right, Tony. Always Thank good you, to see you, my Thank friend. You. We wish it. you nothing but the best of luck this Thank year. Thank you. We come back on Conference USA Basketball Media Days. We'll be talking ODU basketball. We'll be back.